Peacock 45 here. I've got a quiz for you today. Which of these firearms is the Glock, which is the Taurus? Can you tell? Huh? Since they're field stripped, they are taken apart. Okay? I bet all of you know, don't you? <laughs> well, I, I thought I would uh, have a couple, because it's so similar to a Glock, Glock 19, Glock 17, whatever. The Taurus G3. That's what we're about today, and you're looking at it. Okay, you got the firing pin block, you've uh, got the, you know, you can see the striker, very similar. Uh, I know people hate all these comparisons with Glock, but you know, that's what everybody's copied, or almost everybody, and, and whether you, you know, they may have copied them and done a better job, you know, so I'm not saying which is better, but uh, kind of like the Ford 150 or whatever. And we have them both here. Let's put them together, all right? This is the Taurus. Uh, G3. I thought that was a German battle rifle, the G3. Maybe not. But I've been shooting this thing, and you have requested that we take a look at it for quite a while. And, uh, you know that story. I finally got around to it, didn't I? Okay, actually got one. Okay. The good thing I got it, too, because I requested it just before the tsunami hit. So we got the Taurus G3. Uh, you've been asking. I've been shooting it. And I guess I'll put the Glock together too, just so, so we'll have them. Uh, I know everything is not a Glock and maybe shouldn't be compared with a Glock, but uh, the the method of operation, breakdown, and everything else, it's just quite often very similar, isn't it? And uh, the Taurus G3, you know, that's what people do. Something that works, they tend to copy it and, uh, you know, sometimes they improve it. And we'll see uh, what we think about this. Let me put it up against this one, uh, just for size comparison and everything. It's, it's a little heavier, not much. A little thicker, not much. Okay, so it's kind of the size of a, I guess a Glock 19, mostly. More so than a 17, I guess. So there you go. And uh, just a tad bit longer with the flush magazine with 15 rounds, okay? Just a tad longer. And you've got this magazine that holds uh, 17 that has a little bit of an extender on it turns it into a Glock 17 kind of size gun, okay? Well, let's shoot it. I'll just put, shoot that mag, okay? Glock, or a uh, Taurus G3. Uh, so far, it has done well, I'll have to say. <laughs> it'll even bowl. Yeah, what'd I tell you? Let's see if it'll smoke pot. It did. <laughs> I didn't even aim. It was just intimidating me right there. I wanted to shoot it quickly. All right, we emptied that mag pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, I like to say I had no problems with it. All right, and uh, if we would uh, we would be less than honest if we didn't admit and point out that in the past, you know, some Taurus pistols, even revolvers, have had sketchy quality control. Right? Yeah, we know that. I, it seems like they're doing better these days, you know? And, uh, oh, look what I saw over there. I just noticed it. Aren't, aren't those pretty? Yeah, we also want to thank Atmex, the American uh, Precious Metal Exchange, those beautiful Silver Eagles there. They uh, are a great supporter. And if you're interested in precious metals, like a lot of people are these days, uh, go check them out. Links are in the description. You know, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, anything you want, numismatic coins or bullion, whatever. Appreciate their assistance. Uh, help keep this thing going. Uh, but Taurus, from everything I've read, people I've talked to, they seem to be upping their game, okay? And uh, I think the, uh, the G2 was a pretty good gun. This one has had a lot of acclaim. Uh, a lot of people like it. And that's one reason we get so many requests, I think. Uh, people want to know what we think about it. John has shot it. He was fairly impressed. There's one thing, our biggest negative. It's funny because uh, the first time John shot it, I, I told him I'd been shooting it. It's been doing fine. I said, there's one big negative. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. Here, you take it and see what you think it is, what I'm going to say. He nailed it in about three seconds. And uh, that is, I'll, I'll get the big negative out of the way first. And that may be because it's... Uh, the trigger is, uh, it's striker fired, but it has, uh, we call it repeat uh, capability. So if I if I have a dead round, I go click, and oh, nothing happened. I can just release the trigger and fire it again, okay? 
second strike capability. Let's try to think of second strike capability. So it has that. That may be the reason that the, the trigger breaks so far rearward. Okay, see that how far back I am? Click. Okay, it's so all the way back. Now, it may not just be, or may be more than just that. It may be just the contrary of the, the frame and everything combined. And it's partly my large hands, but when I pull it up to shoot, if that thing would break, you know, like right about there, oh man, where some of my favorite pistols do, uh, I, I'd have a hard time criticizing this pistol because it seems to shoot fine. Let me try it some more. And, uh, you know, it feels good. The grip is good. Uh, it, it feels it feels good, all right. All right, let's shoot something. Oh, let's put a round in the chamber and shoot something. Uh oh. The old gong is loud when I hit it. Now, I had some misses there, and it really is part of that trigger. It's just, uh, I don't like that trigger. I just don't like where it breaks. I have to squeeze my hand together, you know, so far to get that trigger to break. And it's amazing, for those of you who are new shooters, you, you hear us and probably other folks complain about things that you think, that's stupid. Where, what? How could a half inch on the buttstock make that much difference? Or, or exactly where the trigger breaks? How, how does that make so much difference? Well, it does. It breaks the reset. Let's check the reset. Now, yeah, it's a nice uh, short reset. And the trigger isn't that bad. It could be better. It's not a horrible uh, for a striker fired pistol at all. Okay, I'm talking about any, a Glock or whatever. It's a nice, nice, nice enough trigger. Uh, it's just that it breaks way back there. And if you have small hands, that may not be a factor at all, okay, at all. So let me load those while I'm yakking at you. This thing, I think, retails, MSRP is around 350 And I don't know, I've been reading, you might get it for as low as almost 250 you know, between probably most likely 250 to 300 And that's talking like half the price, all right, of a Glock or of m and you know, other similar pistols. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a striker fired firearm like this, uh, this is probably one you want to take a look at. I've never been a huge fan of Taurus. You know, again, their quality control has been sketchy. We've had issues with a couple we've looked at. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I think uh, maybe they're looking a little bit better. Uh, some of you that shoot a lot of Tauruses, Review a lot of Tauruses could probably speak uh, more authoritatively to that. Uh, we just did the, uh, been shooting the uh, Taurus Circuit Judge, for example. And that thing seems well made, no problems at all. Uh, you know, at all. And uh, so, you know, I can give credit where credit is due. I mean, we don't like to bash anybody unnecessarily. And as I say, uh, pretty frequently we don't like to make something look better than it is or worse than it is uh, and that happens sometimes with an individual firearm for example like we may not have any malfunctions with this we've not had any like before the video in the days I've had it uh, and we may not have any problems today but you might have all kinds of problems with one I don't know this is one sample okay so that's what we do we give you our experience with something whether it's a Colt Python or a Glock or m and or whatever it might be. But it's pretty cool. One thing I was going to show you, I didn't put the calipers on it. I just noticed with this flexible holster I use sometimes, this works. This is a Glock 19 holster, uh, G19. I wish holster makers, I wish it was a law. I wish it was a law that you have to emblazon on every holster what, what it's for. <laughs> I've got so many holsters, I have to label them. And uh, it fits okay in that. Now in this uh, Blade Tech, it yeah you know, won't go in that one okay so that shows you it's a little it's for a glock 19 and that shows you that it's just a little thicker okay than a glock 19 but uh and just a little heavier but it uh, i like the contours it feels good in fact it feels better to just pick up and work the slide uh in some ways than, than the glock it's got you get nice bite there 
Okay, you got the front serrations, which I rarely ever use. I don't want my hand out in front of the muzzle that much. I just use the back, you know. But uh, it really feels good, okay? Let's shoot it. Uh, like I say, the trigger, the position of the trigger, where it breaks is a uh, deficiency for me. It's a negative, and it actually affects how well I can shoot. It just does as much as anything. Uh, all right, let's shoot that target. Let's put a round in the chamber. That feels pretty good. A little pot. Oh, there's another two. <laughs> All right. I didn't bring my mag pouch out. My back pocket is my mag pouch. What do we want to shoot? Let's shoot those tree limbs some more. Now let's go over there if we got another round or two and uh, try that little piggy on the left top. Went just over it. I saw the I saw that brown leaf. That's what I was actually shooting at, that brown leaf. Okay. As I've said before, I'm not uh, inebriated as I do the walking across here is kind of awkward land uh, contour. So yeah, uh, Taurus G3, uh, my gosh, you got a nice grip. It, it really does. Uh, you know, for 250, 300 bucks, uh, what you would probably pay for it. I, man, this, this is uh, something you might want to look at. It really is. It's, uh, I say low end price wise, maybe it's not low end quality wise. Uh, I can't, I have not been able to get to malfunction. Uh, let me shoot a couple more mags uh, in my pocket. Maybe uh, I haven't tried to limp wrist it, but you know, if you try to limp wrist a gun, you'll probably succeed. You know, I, I'm not done that kind of testing. And I'm not shot a thousand rounds through it. Uh, somebody else can do that. They've been out, people shoot them. The, uh, you know, we typically, we don't do that really. Uh, you know, it'd be useful, of course, but I guess, but it's just one sample. And uh, the better sampling is, everybody's experience I always think is if there's a firearm that's that's having problems generally it will show up around the internet won't it uh, you'll see different people having the problem which is much more valuable to me than just one person having problems or having success I want to see several pro people like repeating that experience before I give it too much credibility not that that person doesn't have credibility but it's just that particular firearm like I say, this exact sample could have all kinds of issues, and then, but none of the others. You know, they are made by humans, I assume. You know, something unlike me, real human. And uh, yeah, so there we go. I know a lot of you are looking for a, a good gun that is not too expensive. You know, I mean, <laughs> like almost everybody is uh, attracted by that, right? And uh, this, this might be one. You know, there's a lot of buzz about it, and uh, you know, and it's one of the reasons. You know, not to bring up a sore subject, but there are some like $150 firearms out there, aren't there? $175 firearms that uh, are really big and clunky and different things and less ergonomic. Uh, that's why you know John and I our kind of thinking is, man, save up just a little more money, and you can get something like this. This is. There's just no difference really in the way this thing operates and feels hardly than that Glock 19, which is kind of the the standard that so many firearms are judged by up against. You know, I know you hate to hear that, some of you Glock haters, but it's just a fact. And, you know, if that trigger doesn't bother you where it breaks, you know, it, there's not much difference. Okay, now you've got a safety on this one. Okay, I didn't point that out. A trigger safety. You may not like that. And I don't know if it comes with without that or not. It doesn't come in a lot of different configurations. Uh, if you want a four inch barrel in this size gun, that's what you get. It does come in different finishes, okay? And, uh, and I think maybe even colors on the grip, I'm not sure. But so this is kind of it, the G3. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed for the money. And, you know, even if it were a $500 firearm, 
I wouldn't, uh, you know, have a big problem with it other than that, the, where the trigger breaks. All right. Let me go. Hey, that pig survived, didn't he? <sighs> Not for long. Yeah, what'd I tell you? Oh, didn't fall. All right, smart Alec. He's moving on me. I saw it, he's moving. Okay, oh, the bad shooting right there. I'm gonna try that pig. I'm gonna try to redeem myself. The pig in the middle of the field over there. There we go. If I just bear down, I can do okay. All right, cowboy, how have you survived so long? I'm sorry I neglected you. I didn't mean to do that. We have another mag. Again, you've got this 17-round uh, magazine with little extender on it and uh, fits nicely. You know, your contour is not interrupted or anything. So you've got a 17 rounder or a 15 rounder. And depending on where you live, there's 10 round magazines available. All right. Uh, oh, well, let's just shoot. Let's just shoot. Some of match are fun to, to play with. So once I get used to that trigger, I can deal with it, but it's just not something I'd want to have to deal with, okay? And again, uh, don't give me a hard time because I make a big deal out of that. I have large hands, really large hands. And, uh, and again, I admit that for you, that may not be a problem at all. If you uh, pick up this firearm in a, in a shot, and that's something I would recommend to anybody, you, know, you want to shoot these things if you possibly can. Uh, good rental range, they're probably going to have this, they're going to have the Glock, they're going to have the M&Ps and uh, all these popular pistols. And just you know, shoot them. It's worth the ammo, it's worth the time, whatever it, it costs, so you don't buy something you're wanting to trade off you know, the next week. And uh, notice the triggers. You really the feel, the grip, and where the trigger breaks, and uh, how it breaks, and whether or not the firearm feels right to you. Field strip it, put it back together. That's just the beauty in being able to rent one. I guess they let you field strip them, you know, okay, in most places. I would think they would if you may have to ask, but, because uh, that's why you're doing it, to, to make a decision. And uh, so it gives you some real world experience to base that on. Uh, so, uh, the grip feels good. You get really good friction with that, I'll have to say. Really good friction. It feels good, uh, yeah. The hump, you got kind of a hump, but it's a more of a gradual hump. It's, it's uh, actually feels a little better than the Glock, the uh, you know, uh, grip, the back part of it. So uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to say I, I, I'm, I'm impressed, okay? I'm impressed. You don't have to use the safety, but you've got it if you want to, okay? Uh, just not a lot of negatives uh, but other, other than that trigger. I kind of like it, all right? And again, I didn't do the 800 round test or anything. We haven't shot it that much, but uh, nice pistol, my gosh. And I always have to add for the money because uh, it really is. I mean, it's especially a nice pistol for the money. And it actually seems to be just in general a nice pistol. Okay, so share your experience. I know a bunch of, of you have them out there, uh, or you've been contemplating buying them, because I hear about them all the time. People want us to get one. What's your experience? Have you had malfunctions? Has it, has it been reliable? Any problems developed? You know, help other folks, because I don't want to brag something up too much if, if there's problems uh, occurring with it or something, or where uh, unnecessarily. Uh, but I tell you, uh, it's a good feeling pistol. Shoots good. It makes me want to just keep shooting it. It really does. Uh, but, you know, I have an addiction, you know, in that regard. You all are well aware of that by now. So the G3 Taurus is a uh, pretty nice pistol. It might be a little hard to come by as we speak. They'll know with people buying fire, so many firearms. But a good choice and a bargain price. Life is good.
Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms, you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.